Hey everyone, welcome to video number five, and um, if you're just joining, uh, my name is Rachel, and uh, this is me. Um, that's uh, what I'm going for on this uh, vlog, as I have been told. Um, so today I'm going to read a, another poem that I wrote. Um, technically I only have two poems uh finished poems. I'm working on one more that um, should be finished in a couple days. Um, need to get somebody to proofread it first. Um, so I'm just going to jump straight into it and um, then I'll talk about it afterwards. This one is called Security Blanket and here it goes. I pulled out my security blanket again today, not the spiritual being that some may cling to, or crutch as some may call it, not the words like ones used to calm a fussy baby, like, hush little baby, don't you cry. I mean, my literal blanket. The blanket that has been with me for as long as I can remember. My blanket that I have no idea where it came from, but has always kept me safe. My blanket that has kept me safe growing up whenever I felt nervous, anxious, or scared. My blanket that has wrapped its edge around me like a Cancun, safe from the ever-changing environment. My blanket that kept me safe through my long marriage when every day would be a new trial and error that would never seem to conclude to any study. My blanket that wrapped around me when he didn't come home for nights at a time when he should have been the one holding me. Yet it was this weightless blanket that was holding me steady. Then I met him. I felt his safeness in his arms when he said, Everything is going to be okay. He became my blanket. He held me through the ra rational and irrational fears. For example, my ex-husband was coming to kill me. For example, I was going to be kidnapped if I went out at night. For example, that fire was going to burn me. If I could see it, I was too close. For nearly four years, I put away the physical blanket and cling to his soul blanket. I held to his warmth, his hands, his safety. But today, today, I took it back out. It's not as big as I remember. Its threads are getting weak, and the dust was piled up. But I pulled it out for fear that I might not be safe for fear that there are yet more changes around the bin, for changes, for reasons unknown, literally. You see, he is here, but he's not here. He's still with me in heart, but he's not here. He talks to me, but he's not here. So until his soul, soul blanket is sewn back together, I'll be here clinging to this worn-out old blanket till every thread has vanished. So I'm going to be showing y'all today my literal literal uh, security blanket um, that not a lot of people know that I have and um, part of opening up is showing that um, sometimes it's literally a blanket that gets me through the night and um, it happens to be this one. Um, I don't know if you can see, there is a unicorn on it, um, and I have spent the last week, um, trying to track down how long I've had this blanket, um, asking family and, um, how long they can remember. Um, we know for sure 2001 that I, um, had it when, uh, my grandma passed away. Um, but we have no idea before then. So, um, this blanket has been with me a long, long time. Um, and it literally is what keeps me feeling safe. Um, you say it's just a blanket, but, um, the, the... The mindset that I have in it, that it will protect me, um, goes far more 
than just the blanket. Um, again, this thing, this blanket has been with me through so much. Um, you can see the, the stuff falling off, uh, literally. Um, but it's still there. And, um, one of my biggest fears is going out by myself, um, especially at night. Um, during the day, I do really good. Um, at night, I have so many phobias. Um, the other night, there was a storm in this camper that I'm staying in, and I literally was paralyzed to the bed. Um, I could not get up and um, to even get help. And that's like that a lot when I'm by myself. And for four years, um, I didn't have to deal with that. Um, I hadn't really conquered it because he was always here beside me. Um, there was very few nights that we spent apart. And when we were, um, I was with family. And so this is the first time that I've really been alone. And yes, my family is maybe 40 feet from me, um, but they are not literally in the same room. If I yelled, they could not hear me. And I've had to do this now for, oh man, about three weeks now. And I'm still adjusting. And I literally still nights where I just cry because I'm too scared, too scared to go out of the trailer to even go to the restroom or to even pick up my phone to call somebody because I'm afraid if I move, they'll figure out where I'm at. Um, and I don't know why. And it's something that I am really, really trying to overcome and has been one of the hardest things um, because a lot of people don't understand it. Uh, when I call... If I am do have to be out at late at night and I try to call somebody and they don't answer, um, it's really hard. <laughs> and I start panicking and I call somebody else until somebody else answers. And I definitely am trying to overcome that. Um, and hopefully um, that's something that with some continuous trying, um, I might be able to overcome. Um, but if anybody else has that fear, don't let people tell you that it's irrational. Um, because it's not. <laughs> it's not something that just clicks that, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm safe now. Um, the fact that I've made it three weeks in this camper, I am still shocked. Um, but each day I'm telling myself, just to get through this day. Just get through this day. Just get through this day. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave you all on that. Um, if anybody ever needs to talk... Um, about a fear or if you're feeling alone, don't hesitate to message me. Um, I know what it's like. Y'all have a great night.